Hi all, I have come up with a presentation on COVID-19. First, let us have an overview of coronaviruses. Human coronaviruses commonly causes upper respiratory tract infections. Here we have COVID-19, which is a disease caused by the new coronavirus named SARS coronavirus 2. It was confirmed as new by sequencing its genome. After sequencing its genome, it was found somewhat similar to bat coronaviruses. These coronaviruses were first identified in 1960s. They have crown-like spikes on their surface. In Latin, corona means crown. This name refers to the appearance of these surface projections resembling the solar corona. Coronaviruses can cause relatively harmless common cold like symptoms or it can cause severe disease. Taxonomically, they come under order Nidovirales, family Coronaviridae and subfamily Orthocoronavirinae. They are classified into different genera like Alpha Coronavirus and Beta Coronavirus which infect mammals and Gamma Coronavirus and Delta Coronavirus which infect birds. There are seven coronaviruses known to cause human disease. Four of these produce mild symptoms. They are 229E, NL63. Both of them are alpha coronavirus and OC43 and HKU1. Both of them are beta coronaviruses. These can cause very mild disease. The other three can cause very severe disease. They are SARS coronavirus or severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus which occurred in 2002-2004. MERS coronavirus or Middle East respiratory syndrome coronavirus occurred in 2012 and still continues in camels and now SARS coronavirus 2 in 2019. Looking at the history. In 2002, SARS originated in civet cats. These are small mammal and were sold in meat markets of China and carried the viruses from horseshoe bats to humans. In 2012, MERS originated in camels. And in 2019, COVID-19 originated and the source is still a question mark. On epidemiological overview, on 31st December 2019, in Wuhan city of China, some cases of pneumonia of unknown etiology was reported. On 7th January 2020, they identified a novel type of coronavirus. On 12th January 2020, China shared the genetic sequence of novel coronavirus. On 11th February 2020, the novel coronavirus was named SARS coronavirus 2 and the disease coronaviral disease 2019 or COVID-19. On 11th March 2020, WHO declared COVID-19 outbreak a pandemic. SARS coronavirus 2 origin. Genome sequence analysis of COVID-19 showed 88% identity with two bad derived SARS-like coronaviruses and 50% to the MERS coronavirus. Both SARS coronavirus and MERS coronavirus originated in bats. It suggests that bats were most likely the original reservoirs for SARS coronavirus 2. Now the structure of coronaviruses. They are 65 to 125 nanometer particles. They are one of the largest viruses. They are enveloped and single-stranded RNA viruses. Their genome size being 26 to 32 kilobases. There are four major proteins, S or spike protein, M or a membrane protein, E or envelope protein, N or nucleocapsid protein. S or spike protein is the most exposed one. 
It has S1 and S2 subunits. S1 seems to be the most variable antigen and S2 is found similar to SARS coronavirus. Transmission of respiratory viruses generally occur through droplets which are larger that is greater than 5 micrometer particles. They travel only under 1 meter. They will be settling down. Aerosols are smaller particles less than 5 micrometer particles and they can travel over 1 meter. Contact with formides is another route that is through any object which is infected with droplets and then we touch our eyes, nose or mouth. The virus can be transmitted. At present, the main way that the virus causing COVID-19 is thought to spread through droplets that is when a person coughs or through formites that is objects which are infected with droplets and then we touch our eyes, nose or mouth. Transmission through aerosol is under investigation only. Pathogenesis Infection begins when the spike protein attaches to host cell receptor ACE2 and geotensin converting enzyme 2 which are present on the human respiratory epithelial surface. It leads to fusion of the viral envelope to cell membrane. Six amino acids on the spike protein are critical for binding to the ACE2 receptor. These six amino acids are also important for determining the host range of coronaviruses. On entry into the host, the virus particles are uncoated and viral replication occurs. The incubation period for COVID-19 is on an average 5 to 6 days. It may range from 0 to 14 days, but there are reports of cases with incubation period ranging up to 28, 30 or 35 days. It is suspected that transmission can occur even before any symptoms develop. The viral load was found to be increased rapidly one to two days before the development of symptoms in infected individuals, which means that they may be infectious even before they become unwell. Symptoms of COVID-19 includes cough, fever, fatigue, myalgia. Minor symptoms like headache, diarrhea, nausea or vomiting may also occur. Pneumonia and septic shock are serious complications. Based on the initial data, 80% of patients with COVID-19 infection are asymptomatic or have mild to moderate symptoms. There are some red flag symptoms, that is, indicators of danger. They are severe breathlessness, pain or pressure in the chest and change in the skin color. Now the immune response. Immune response occurs when antigen presenting cells activate T cells to produce cytokines by increased cytotoxic T cell response or by effective production of antibodies. Normal response of cytokines is necessary for recovery from infection but in COVID-19 increased cytokine production occurs sometimes which may lead to a condition called cytokine storm syndrome or CSS. CSS is a dangerous overreaction of the immune system. It can be called as hyperinflammation. When any cell senses something bad is going to happen, they kill themselves to stop spread of the virus to other healthy cells. Cytokines trigger cell death. When many cells doing this same time, it may result in cytokine storm syndrome and eventually death. Increase in interleukin-6, interleukin-2 or gamma interferons, tumor necrosis factor alpha and CRP are observed. CRP levels are positively correlated with lung lesion and severity. In early stage, boost immune response and in later stage, block immune response because stronger immune response may not be advantageous for patients who have entered into severe stage of COVID-19. Now the diagnostics and testing for COVID-19. 
WHO has advised all the countries to test, test, test. Test include amino assays like ELISA or rapid diagnostic test that detect viral antigen and antibody IgG or IgM. Molecular test or nucleic acid test include PCR polymerase chain reaction and LAMP loop mediated isothermal amplification. In any of these tests, negative results do not rule out the infection. Follow up testing should be considered for confirmation. Before doing any of the tests, you need PPE, personal protective equipments, including N95 respirator, long sleeved gown, goggles and face shield for eye protection, gloves and proper hand hygiene should be followed. Recommended specimens are nasopharyngeal swab and oropharyngeal swab. The collection of a combined nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal swabs can improve test sensitivity. Swabs should be transported in universal viral or amis transport medium which should be kept at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius and should be transported to the lab within 72 hours. In case none of these transport medium are available, you can use sterile saline. Both upper and lower respiratory tract samples are preferred. Key point is to have right test at the right time for the right patient. Tests are done to screen, that is to early detection of the case and for confirm the test and surveillance, that is for a close observation of a population. So make the right decision to when, where and how these tests should be used. Rapid test or CART test are normally used. They are easy, rapid and cost effective but the disadvantages are they are less sensitive and less specific. Antigen testing is not done in India. Antibody testing are done for IgM antibody detection which appear after 4 days of infection and it may last up to 3 to 4 weeks. IgG antibodies can be detected after 12 days and how long it may appear is not confirmed. Sometimes it may last long, that is for several years. There is an atypical antibody response observed in COVID-19 patients. IgM may persist for months. So there may be a period when both IgM and IgG antibody happens around the same time. So these antibody tests cannot be used to distinguish between current and past infection. Molecular testing. No test is perfect. According to WHO, screening by RT-PCR of a single gene target is acceptable and confirm the test results with a second different gene target. Gene targets include envelope or E, RDRP that is RNA dependent RNA polymerase, S spike, N for nucleocapsid and non-structural protein NSP14. WHO recommends E gene as the screening gene and confirmed by RDRP gene assay. RT-PCR is considered as the gold standard for COVID-19 test. This test can amplify a tiny amount of viral RNA. There are three steps. It starts with conversion of viral RNA into complementary DNA, then PCR amplification and finally detection. Sample inactivation should be done in a biological safety cabinet or BSC class 2. If BSC is not available, use a glove box. Lamina flow hood is not suitable for this purpose. RT-PCR process includes RNA extraction, master mix preparation, adding extracted RNA templates, positive and negative controls to master mix, reverse transcription and real-time PCR amplification. The other method is LAMP, loop mediated isothermal amplification which is more economical and quicker. This test kit detects N gene combining with the reverse transcriptase to form complementary DNA and then loop mediated isothermal amplification. It is performed at a constant temperature so a thermal cycler is not needed but this test is less versatile than PCR. Is there any treatment for COVID-19? 
at the moment we have no drugs that are safe or effective in humans in the case of cytokine storm syndrome steroids immunoglobulin cytokine blockade or interleukin 6 inhibitors are recommended it is advised as steroids should not be given immunoglobulins can be given as convalescent sera that is sera obtained from one who has recovered from covid-19 cytokine blockade and interleukin 6 inhibitors they can help to reduce hyperinflammation zinc act as a broad spectrum antiviral hydroxychloroquine have been used recently they are anti malarial drugs and they can inhibit immune activation and reduce production of cytokines anti hiv drugs are to be applied on case to case basis only not for all patients CRISPR technique that is clustered regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats which are inserted to the genome will identify the drug targets that may prevent viral infection. Now for prophylaxis, wash your hands in the right way, maintain distance that is social distancing to slow the spread of the virus, avoid touching your hands, eyes, nose or mouth, stay up to date and follow the advice of the healthcare, national or local authorities and employers. Are there any vaccines? A lot of candidate vaccines are being developed, but they should undergo a very stringent testing before it can be used at a population level. What we should do? We should act early, provide rapid diagnosis, contact tracing should be done, develop policies and so on. Sharing of information is more important. Even if we call it at global level, it is at the community level that the control, the fight against outbreaks is won or lost. But still, we don't have all the information. There is a question, can people get reinfected? No one knows yet. We do not yet have enough data to confirm that whether these antibodies protect or if they protect what antibody levels are required or how long it may last. Experience with other coronaviruses suggests at least a period of natural immunity after infection, but it may not be lifelong. Immunity may be dependent on the severity of illness. It is unclear whether recovered patients are immune to second infection. Coronaviruses generally are seasonal. It may be that we will see a peak now, then a drop in infections with a return and a second wave or subsequent waves in future years. In future, if the virus re-emerges, we should consider has the virus changed its structure. Then we should reset all the diagnostic tests we have designed now. See how this COVID-19 is affecting us. It has changed our entire lifestyle. We are temporarily closed now. Prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. Nothing lasts forever, not even the coronavirus. Charles Darwin has quoted, It is not the strongest of the species that survives. It is the one that is most adaptable to change. So, get adapted to this change. Stay home, be safe. Wish you all well. Thank all the healthcare professionals. We are stronger together. Thank you.